a dream come true coming to the games of this nature you sit as a child and you watch people compete at these games and you never really know that you're going to end up there there was a lot of media before we left home about how security might be an issue here and how health might be an issue here and until the day I got on the plane there was every possibility I would not come my husband actually can't believe I really did get on the plane because I was quite anxious but since I've been here every day, I've been a little bit more brave and felt a lot more comfortable. And now we go wherever we want with no concerns. We've been through Old Delhi. We've been through Chenni Chow. Uh, you can see we're shopping here today. I feel quite safe, quite secure. Before coming here, seeing on the news, there's a lot of negative, um, negative coverage. And uh, most of it was rubbish because when we got here, one of the best squash facilities I've ever seen. Uh, the village is fantastic. Food's good. They're it couldn't have been further from the truth. I have to tell you, the opening ceremonies were really quite a remarkable experience. Uh, uh, being in the stadium uh, and watching uh, all the different elements uh, of the performance was really uh, fantastic. Uh, so uh, that I enjoyed a lot. In India, we had a lot of support in India. When we went into the opening ceremony, we had a lot of people in the stadium. So it was very good. Everyone here has been really, really helpful. Always try to help and just be a really amazing welcome that we've felt as well. Part of Team Scotland coming here has been all good things. Uh, for squash, the Commonwealth Games is our biggest uh, achievement, our biggest tournament competition. We're not yet an Olympic sport, we're still striving for that recognition. So, the Commonwealth's gold medal is the biggest thing in our sport. So, I'm just, I don't think it's quite sunk in yet the sort of magnitude of the achievement, but. You know, when it does, I'm sure it's something that I'll be proud of and I'll remember these weeks in Delhi forever. When you go to an arena like the, the Indira Gandhi Stadium, you have this, can, you know, you can go into some arenas that can be just, oh, it's nice, just an hour wrestling hall. But you walk in there and the crowd, you get uplifted by it. Do you know what I mean? The warm-up mats, for the warm-up mats, you can see the athletes getting built up for it. And they, they enjoy it. They enjoy performing in a fantastic arena. They enjoy performing in front of a fantastic crowd. And the Indians are notoriously fanatical about the wrestling, we know that, and it makes for the games, and that's, to me, is, that's my big bonus, really, that's, that's, that's the bonus I'll take back, it's how, they are, how they've been treated, it's fabulous. As a stadium, as a stadium, we didn't have any stadium, but if we are here, we will be training, and in that way, we will play in London Olympic, so we will get a good benefit. What good it, it has done, I think, was for, was for the athletes. I think it gave them a great sense of confidence. I have never seen an Indian contingent walk out with the confidence that, that, that they did 
uh, both in Delhi and in Guangzhou because they just looked so happy and they just looked so confident and they looked that they had one billion people behind them. I attended, for example, the 400 meter race by the Indian uh, women's race, which was absolutely fantastic. I mean, you know, Nehru Stadium, the roof nearly came down. It's the climax the Indians wanted. They've taken the lead here. What a leg by Bamloa. Unbelievable performance by her. India in the lead. I think she can. Mandeep Kaur is going to set the stadium alight. The Indians are the champions. What a story for the Indians. struck me most in the games was the Indi Indian athletes. Last night in the 4 by 400 in the discus, the 800 meter runner, there is a, a potential for athletics there that really is huge. So I think people will look at India as a, an emerging sporting powerhouse. Yeah, over the next 20, 30 years. I mean, now I have a lot of emails on Facebook and on Twitter, so many people say that we are your fans. It feels very awkward to me. Because I have to grow up now, so I have to grow up now. 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 I have won gold medals for bad event, a 10 meter air rifle woman and I also won a bronze for individual for the same event. I got one uh, gold for pairs and silver for individual. We just got a bronze last night from one of the para athletes. That's quite something for Namibia. Medal can change your life 360 degrees. If you get it, it's, it's just the way it is. I mean, it also brings opportunities to the country. Yeah, the medal is not just a medal, it's an achievement for the country. I think countries that host games like this, are successful games, um, it rubs off on the people and you'll find that if you host a few of these you start getting more medals. I mean you see that with China, you saw that with India this time, I mean India did terrifically. Um, in weightlifting for instance, you know there are these, these women from Haryana who sort of just kind of came from nowhere. I never heard, of, heard about Haryana weightlifting before but the, you know that kind of thing and if you're watching that on TV you could sit, be sitting in Tamil Nadu and thinking my God, you know, those people in Haryana are really good at weightlifting. Maybe I'll start doing this. And I think that it encourages people to excel and it encourages people to experiment with, with, with sport as well. And I, I can only think that that is good. <laughs> perspective the venues are working quite well always one or two little issues but 
It's a shame that people tend to dwell on the difficulties rather than on the positives, and there have been a lot of positives here. Especially the training venue and the competition venue, they're fantastic, the best I've ever seen, really. The people here in the cafeteria and like all the staff, all the I'm, I'm sure if they're volunteers or staff, but absolutely like top notch, like really great to us, definitely. Didn't really know what to expect, but the village is amazing. There's so much to do and the food's really good and training facilities are so convenient because it's just around the corner for me. The media always manages to blow things up proportion a little bit, so um, I knew it wouldn't be as bad, but yeah, I found it surprisingly lovely. <laughs> Only the people that are kind of working in the village um, who are really, really nice, everyone that I've met so far is just so helpful and friendly, and um, it's a really nice atmosphere. You talk about the buildings, you talk about washing machines in every building, you got TV in every building, uh, you got screen. everything, everything. A lot now of you food. come over here, you got food. Too much food. And you get down here, well, not too much food. Good food, very good, good food. food. <laughs> but when you come down here, you get a vehicle to ride down here. And on your back, you get a vehicle. To ride back. You got entertainment over here. What else do you need? Yeah. You're living like kings and queens. A lot of shooters I've been talking to, and they were like very impressed with the range. They're very impressed with the organization, the transport, the opening ceremony. Even I was impressed by the transport system because I've been to a couple of opening ceremonies and after that, it's horrible. In Melbourne, I literally had to push people away to get into the bus. In Doha, Asian Games, we had no idea what gate to exit from. time ever, we were, we, the para athletes have wheeling accessible showers, which has never been done before. It wasn't done in Beijing, it wasn't done in Athens, so the amount of wheelchair showers is fantastic. As long as everybody here is happy, that's, that's a success in its own, you know? Yeah. Food. Never slept. 24 hours. I'm here about 14 hours. And the rest of the kitchen, when I hand over to the second in command, he's there throughout the night. There are about 250 items every day on the menu. The highest release is 37,000 meals a day, which includes this and the walk post. But they are, if you walk inside at 2 at night, you'll get something hot. We're delighted so far that we haven't had to be that busy apart from the massage and things like that because the food is so fantastic and we haven't had, we've probably had two people with mild tummy upsets. So it's, it's good, you know, and I think the, the, the standards of hygiene in the kitchen have been fabulous. We travel extensively in other parts of Europe and things and you can be in tournaments where it's not as friendly, let's say that, and you're not treated as friendly, but that's just the nature of sport. But the Commonwealth seem to have this, you know, it's, it's like, almost like a family kind of thing and all the 71 countries and territories make up this kind of close family. All you can judge is, is that at the moment everybody's happy, all the athletes are very satisfied with the security. Certainly the security is the toughest I've ever seen. 
ever. I went to the Sydney Olympics, the Beijing Olympics, and the security here is absolutely formidable. The vibe of the people on the street, everybody, the people, everyday life is amazing. We've been running on buses, tuk-tuks, etc. We've even been walking a lot. Not the slightest problem of, the people are all smiling at you. How could you, can't you feel safe? We in South Asia, having lived here for long, long years since we were born, we know South Asians work at the last moment. So uh, I'm very frank on this. Uh, so we were not worried. We knew that everything will be there at the last, at, at the right time, and it was. We are visiting stadium, we are stadium every day. We are watching one event every day, and everywhere we are finding traffic police to be fine, Delhi police to be fine, volunteers all on duty. They are giving proper information. They are behaving very well. They are friends, yet they are on their places. Nobody is misbehaving. I am a volunteer in Jantar Mantar. सिटी ऑपरेशन की वॉलेंटियर हूँ और यहाँ पे हमने 16 दिन के अंदर इतनी चीजें जान ली कि बस इसका हम एक्सपीरियंस क्या सर कुछ भी कह लीजिए हम कुछ चार शब्दों में पांच शब्दों में या एक लाइन में कुछ भी नहीं बता सकते। I have no words to express how was it. I was really happy and that too my team here so cooperating they are great. It was an opportunity and मैं सिर्फ नहीं करना चाहता था really. I was really enthusiastic कि मैं कुछ करूँ इसके लिए I gave a lot of interviews, I gave a lot of effort, I gave a lot of effort for this and now I think I have done it. It's just like fantabulous. You asked a question earlier about why did the, the mood change in the media stories and I think that's part of it. Journalists write a lot of stories from afar, they don't really necessarily know about it. Then they arrive here, they see it's actually not that bad on the ground. And, um, and that's why the mood changes in some of the stories. And also, no, no bridges have fallen down since we've got here. That, didn't, that wasn't a good story, made for amazing images and, and put a lot of fear into people. But at the end of the day, we've been here and, and not much has gone wrong, if anything. just about running. They're about organizational structure. They're about how the country can actually organize transport, for example, which India did well by building a new airport in time, and they did well by building a new metro in time, and they did well by selecting specific lanes within the daily traffic congestion, which I drive in a lot, which I liked because I could drive freely. Well, certainly Delhi has been a net beneficiary of a lot of infrastructure. Uh, and my hope is, I, and I, when I say this, I, I really mean it, because you have such really good infrastructure now on the sports side, I hope it gets used uh, going forward into the future, because I think that's very important. To, the legacy dimension uh, of the infrastructure for the games, uh, very important. The metro system, of course, is uh, having to drive out uh, outside of Delhi uh, on Friday night. Uh, I envied those people on the subway because, or the metro system, because we were stuck in traffic. Again, having that infrastructure, the airport, uh, I think it's, again, a world-class facility that uh, it sets the, a very good impression when, when people first land. Uh. It has a nation that is committed to cricket. Um, it's a reminder that there are lots of other sports, and that if you're not good at one, you might be good at another, and that if you're not going to be a great cricketer, it doesn't matter, you might be very good at lawn bowls or at swimming. I would love to see some of these other, support, other sports develop. Sometimes you need facilities, and at least Delhi will now have those facilities. I hope other parts of the country will as well. Of course, the stadiums that are going, you know, have been built, I believe, are going to become not only symbols, okay, for how far the government, you know, values sports in this country, but they are going to become instruments for developing more skills, encouraging the youth to take on more sporting activities. I think going forward, Delhi and India can only be better in sports because they took on and organized the Commonwealth Games in the way they did and developed the infrastructure for the games the way they did because the infrastructure is 
fairly world class. Certain, certain journalistic outlets didn't believe it would be a, it would be a mess in India. It wouldn't be organised properly. And yeah, I, th I think there's been some unfair criticism. Well, I think the games themselves were were very successful. The actual running of the games. Um, I think that uh, the competition itself were, was very dynamic, very vibrant, and above all, was a festival of young people because that's what athletes are. As someone who's lived in India for a long time, and as someone who I guess has got a bit of a sense of how things operate here, I had a lot of discussions with editors who who were asking me, "Will Delhi be ready?" And I was all the time saying, "Yes, no problem. You know that it'll be done. India's a you know a, a, a very, got to put a lot of investment into these, this event." There's no doubt that when the time comes, they'll be ready and they'll put the resources available into get doing what it, do, it, it needs to, to be done. And in fact, sometimes I was being accused of being kind of pro-India and sort of backing India all the time and trying to, you know, uh, ignore some of the problems. But I was pretty confident that when it, when it came to the crunch, India would, would deliver. <laughs> to set our sights on 2014 on Glasgow, Scotland. With the knowledge and experience derived from these games and with the standard of excellence that it has been established here in Delhi. It will be a hard act to follow, but we have every confidence that the bar will again be raised in 2014.